In our bull case for Tesla, we're estimating that they would sell about 7 million vehicles in five years' time. So that's still less than Toyota sells, for instance. Um, so they wouldn't necessarily be the largest company, but of course, much larger than they are today. Um, I, I think that uh, what most people are missing about the stock, so for a long time we've heard that there's this demand problem with electric vehicles. Um, to us, that's a kind of a crazy idea um, because if, if, you, if you look at this from a cost perspective, um, we've, we've done the, the modeling using uh, something called Wright's Law, it's a derivation of Moore's Law. So we think that battery costs are declining such that by 2022, a mass market EV will be cheaper than a gas powered car. Now don't worry, Tasha will be back for more throughout this episode. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Today, we're going to take a deeper look at Wright's Law and how it's helped ARC to predict the future with such clarity when it comes to Tesla. This is also a topic that you can start bringing up in conversations with EV skeptics. When they come to you and say EVs will never be mainstream, just ask them how they feel about Wright's Law. When most of them look at you and panic to escape the conversation, you can lovingly drop some wisdom on them because this truly is the core driver behind the electric revolution. Wright's Law aims to provide a reliable framework for forecasting cost declines as a function of cumulative production. It states that for every cumulative doubling of units produced, costs will fall by a constant percentage. We will get to what this means for Tesla, but stick with me for a few minutes as we understand the context of these laws as it will help us understand the driving forces behind technology and innovation. Theodore Paul Wright, or TP Wright, was a U.S. aeronautical engineer and teacher and had an illustrious career, including serving on the National Defense Advisory Committee for Franklin D. Roosevelt. During his days studying airplane manufacturing, he determined that for every doubling of airplane production, the labor requirement was reduced by 10 to 15 percent. At the most basic level, the cost of each unit produced decreases as a function of the cumulative number of units produced. For the math fans and engineers, the actual Wright's Law formula is why each equals AX raised to B, where Y is the cumulative average time or cost per unit, X is the cumulative number of units produced, A is time or cost required to produce the first unit, and B is the slope of the function. We've, we've done the, the modeling using uh, something called Wright's Law, it's a derivation of Moore's Law. Moore's Law focused on cost as a function of time, and specifically, Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years. Moore's Law also attempted to answer why technology costs decline over time, but it instead focused on the wrong variable, time, instead of focusing on the mechanism behind the actual cost declines, production volume. Moore embedded in his law an assumption that over time, unit demand and thus production volumes would respond to continuous price declines. Instead of forecasting cost as a function of time, such a formula needs also to include production volume the driving force behind cost declines. And what's cool about Wright's Law is it can be applied to nearly any industry. As you can see from this chart, since 2005, Wright's Law has been more accurate than Moore's Law and increasingly more accurate as time goes on. Measured over the decade from 2005 to 2015, ARC found that a price forecast based on Wright's Law was 40% more accurate than one based on Moore's Law that battery costs are declining such that by 2022, a mass market EV will be cheaper than a gas powered car. Once that sticker price changes, you get a massive uptick in demand. Um, so we don't see demand being an issue at all for the company. Um, and, and that cost equation will also help Tesla's margins. So right now, auto margins sit at about 20%, a little bit less if you take out credits. Um, we think that could go to up to 40%. Um, if you follow Wright's law, which is forecasted cost declines in the auto industry for over 100 years. And as we learned from quarter three 2020 data from Tesla, their auto margins are now up to 27% and 23% without regulatory credits. So seemingly on their way to the 40% Tasha and Ark are eventually expecting. But how is this happening? If we start by looking at Tesla's Model 3 cost decline curve, we see that for every cumulative doubling of its production, Model 3 costs have fallen by about 15%. And a very important note here, cumulative does mean the number of Model 3s manufactured since its launch. Now, before anyone watching this says, well, this is flawed because this means costs will eventually go to zero, don't say it because that's flawed thinking. 
In this chart, the x-axis is not a function of time, but of the total number of units produced in the history of the product. Think about this. A cumulative doubling of the number of units ever produced becomes exponentially more difficult and would eventually outpace the demand. Because of this, the line will terminate at a fixed point rather than zero dollars. So a mature technology does stop declining in price eventually. And here's where things get really interesting. Globally, automakers have only made roughly 4 million electric vehicles over time, less than 1% of the 2.5 billion internal combustion engine vehicles ever made. Let's say that ICE vehicles stabilize at 90 million vehicles per year, that would mean to cumulatively double the production would take 29 years. Compare that to about one year right now for the doubling of cumulative electric vehicles. Wright's law applies equally to both EVs and ICE, but the difference in time to achieve the cumulative doubling explains the difference in annual cost declines. The cost of the average ICE vehicle will go down by about 0.5% in the coming year, while its EV counterpart costs will drop around 12%. This is how Tesla has been able to lower the cost of vehicles while also increasing their auto margins. And this is all without autonomy. Uh, only recently have we gotten any questions on autonomous driving. And it's something that Tesla's been talking about for years. And this could totally change the business model. It'll be a recurring revenue model like ride hailing as opposed to a one-off sale. Um, so we think that's a massive opportunity. So we think this is going to expand the ride hailing market and um, give a lot of people access to really cheap point to point travel that don't have it today, uh, particularly in markets like China. Um, of course, they'll be much safer. We also think autonomous cars will reduce accident rates by about 80%. Just it gives back time to the consumer, and and what's what's interesting, sort of, if you look at this on an economic perspective, that's really unpaid labor, um, that's all of a sudden going to go into services. So we also think it'll boost GDP. The U.S. will be the first market where this happens, and I think within the next year, you could see um, Waymo opening up its service to the general public. Um, Tesla, uh, which could basically is coming a little bit from behind in terms of capability, but um, could be a really large player because of their scale. That could be something more like 2021. Um, I think China will likely be the next market, maybe you know a year or two after that. And then um, in terms of the largest auto markets, Europe will probably be the most behind maybe a year or two after that. Yes, the software as a service is certainly already impacting margins, but the revenue and margin potential in this space will almost certainly increase from the levels they are at today. And we can't talk about Wright's Law and Tesla without touching on lithium ion batteries. Here's an incredibly important point to make. Looking at this chart, you could assume that lithium ion battery cost declines have plateaued since 2005 after two decades of declining roughly 10% each year. However, the thing that's overlooked is these 10% annual cost declines push the unit cost of lithium ion batteries across a critical threshold which enabled the production of electric vehicles at scale. Using this, analysts could have forecasted that the time required for the cumulative doubling of production of lithium ion batteries would drop in this scenario and that the decline in costs would then re-accelerate. Wright's Law did correctly anticipate a reacceleration in cost declines and the decline in prices due to the production ramp in the industry from the lithium batteries crossing that critical price threshold. It has also opened up new segments of the auto market to use lithium ion batteries and of course a much bigger push toward utility scale energy storage as well. So to land this plane, the cost declines that we can expect from increased production volumes of lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles is the core driving factor for the electric revolution. Not only will the ICE technology become inferior to electric, but Wright's law shows us that the cost declines from technology in the EV space should far outpace any small declines in the ICE space. This is because doubling the production of cumulative ICE vehicles is way harder and takes way longer, roughly 30 years, compared to electric vehicles where it only takes about one year to see that doubling and thus a 12% reduction in technology costs. And then when you factor in the pace of innovation at Tesla at every level of the company, it becomes easy to see what's going to happen when the cost declines hit parity with ICE cars. And in case you were wondering, here's what ARK Invest had to say about Tesla after their recent battery day.
That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Please take a moment to like this video if you did. Consider subscribing if you'd like to keep up with Tesla content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.